Hello everybody, my name is Karish and welcome back to another recap video. This time it's a Chinese horror movie, The Possessed. Now you may have already know about Possession, which in movies looks like a lot of blood and demonic stuff with objects flying around, but real life Possession is somewhat different. And this Chinese horror movie will make us witness that very essence of Possession. It's a found footage film and the atmosphere is really creepy. This movie is also banned from television in China and I think it's a must watch if you're into creepy movies. On top of this, if you're new here, please make sure to subscribe and like this video it's the only thing that motivates me to bring more of these recaps and with that said sit back and relax as a recap the possessed so this story begins with a guy named ding and his buddy meng they're working on a documentary about a fortune teller for their college project they're in a village searching for this fortune teller named wang all they know is that she lives somewhere around here but no one really knows where exactly as they ask around, Ding and Meng meet a palm reader. She takes Meng's hand and starts reading it. Surprisingly, she tells Meng some real stuff about her past, things that actually happened to her as a kid. We also get a hint that Ding might have feelings for Meng, but there's no relationship between them, just a close friendship. Anyway, the palm reader slowly shifts the conversation, saying that something really bad is going to happen to Meng soon. She claims that she can prevent it from happening, but in exchange, she asks for money. Realizing she's probably a scammer, the two friends decides to leave. After they leave the palm reader, they go to see another woman who reads people's horoscope and makes predictions. Meng decides to give her a try and pays for a card reading. This lady though just tells Meng generic things like compliments and safe vague predictions, nothing special or alarming. Finally, they reach an old man who is also a fortune teller but with a twist. He starts spilling the real deal about this village. He explains how the village is full of fake mystiques who don't know anything about real fortune telling. He says these frauds always scare people by predicting something bad and then charge him for fake remedies. After talking to this old man, Mang and Ding wander around the village market, grabbing some food and eventually stopping by a little handmade pancake stall. While picking up some pancakes, Ding casually asks the owner if she knows anything about Wang. Turns out she does and she gives him directions to a spot where people might know Wong's exact address. Ding and Meng rush to that place where they find out that this is Wong's meeting spot. They find a huge crowd there. Everyone was excited and they learn that Wang is not there yet. It's clear that she's super popular cause everyone's waiting just to see her. They both sign a paper and join a waiting list that Wang uses to decide who will she'll meet first. But then they find out that Wang went to a nearby village for some business and she might take a while before she gets back. Since Ding and Meg are in a hurry, they decide to go find her themselves. When they get to the new location, there's another big crowd and they finally catch a glimpse of Wang. She's busy, surrounded by people. Meng manages to pull aside a guy from the crowd and ask him what's going on. The guy tells them that Wang is performing a ceremony called Fu Ar Ren. This ritual is for people who are really sick and haven't been helped by doctors. As it turns out, Wang performed this same ceremony for this guy's wife as well and she got better afterward. We get to see Wang in action now, mixing some mysterious potion that she gives to her patient. She also chants over a doll which seems to be a part of the ritual. At this point, Wang's husband, Yuan, shows up and starts asking Meng about her filming project and why she's interested in Wang. Meanwhile, Wang continues her ritual, finishing it by taking the doll away to burn it as the final step. After this, Ding and Meng talk with Yuan and share details about their documentary project. Ding hits it off with Yuan making jokes and building a good bond and eventually Yuan agrees to help with the shoot. Yuan then goes over to talk to Wang personally and she gives her approval too. Now the real work begins. They kick things off by interviewing Yuan who describes himself as an introverted person. He shares a heartfelt story about his first love which didn't quite work out 
and hints that maybe he didn't marry Wang by choice. Then they interview Wang who opens up about her shamanic powers. She reveals that she was possessed as a child and was saved by an old shaman, after which she became his apprentice. Over time, she learned everything from him and started helping others herself. In the midst of this, Yuan gets a call for help from a distant location. Wang initially declines, saying it's too far away, but a little later, Yuan returns and whispers something in her ear. Wang responds on this, telling him to go find out the birth details of the person involved and report back to her. It seems like they might have a significant case on their hands. After wrapping up the interview, Ding has a sneaky plan. He hides a small camera inside a cigarette pack cause he wants to privately film Meng. He approaches her discreetly and sets the pack on top of a cooler, hoping to capture some candid movements without her noticing. After Ding leaves, Meng starts to feel something was off. Meanwhile, Ding sneaks back to his room and secretly watches Meng on his laptop. But when Meng starts changing her clothes, she senses someone's watching her. Soon after that, she catches Ding red-handed with the camera. Obviously, Meng gets mad and confronts Ding. They end up arguing, but it's a playful fight. Meng takes Ding's prank in stride, treating it more like a joke than anything serious. The next day, Ding apologizes to Meng and they check out of their hotel together to meet up with Wang and Yuan. It turns out the call from the night before was about a serious situation. Yuan explains that a girl in a nearby village is possessed and they need to help her before it's too late or she might die. And Meng and Ding decide they should document this case and they go with Wang and Yuan. After a long drive, they arrive at a desolate place and it looked like if anything goes wrong, help won't be easy to come by. Along the way, they lose phone signal and in the end, they meet Shen, whose sister Li is the one possessed. Shen takes them to his home, which is huge and filled with rooms and lanterns, but the atmosphere there was pretty creepy. Meng and Ding starts filming around the house and Shen goes and unalive a chicken for dinner. Afterwards, Lee comes in to prepare the chicken, but she doesn't say a word. She is completely focused on her cooking, and we cannot tell how Lee is possessed because she looks completely fine. Now everyone gathers for a casual chat, but when dinner arrives, Shen brings Lee out to meet Wang and Yuan. Just before they can get serious, Yuan gets all worked up because the food isn't served in a traditional Chinese way and it creates a lot of tension and awkwardness at the table. After dinner, Wang finally drops a bombshell on the siblings. She has checked Li's birth date and found out that she was born at the exact same time a demon escaped from hell. It's possible that this demon has been living inside Li since she was born. Nothing bad has happened yet, but according to Lee's horoscope, the demon is supposed to be summoned back to hell, which is why the position is happening now. Wang explains that she'll perform a Fuo Ren ceremony on Lee. She'll first separate Lee's soul from her body and then send the demon back to hell. After that, Lee's soul will go back to her body and everything will be okay again. Shen is ready to do the ritual right away, but Wang says that they should do it the next day. Shen then goes to lock his sister in her room to stop her from causing trouble at night. And when he gets back, Shen tells us more about Li's story. We learn that Li got married not too long ago. One day, her husband caught a hedgehog, which is considered unlucky. And that very night, the hedgehog died mysteriously. The next day, Lee and her husband had an accident and her husband died too. Meanwhile, Lee had a miscarriage in that accident and ever since that night, signs of possession started to show up in Lee. She started talking to herself and would sometimes get really aggressive. Now, according to Wong, all this is happening because the demon wants to go back to hell. After this, Shen takes all the guests to their rooms. Wang and Yuan got one room while Meng and Ding have their own rooms. Meng sets up a camera in her room later that night. When Meng and Ding were chatting, they both talk about how the whole possession story might be a lie. They suspect Lee might just be depressed after the accident which makes sense. Now late that night, Meng starts hearing a creepy humming sound coming from outside her room.
It freaks her out as she decides to check it but finds nothing outside. She wanders around a bit and then she spots Lee holding a doll and seeing her freaks Meg out so much that she ran back to her room like anyone should in a horror movie. The next day Meg tells Ding the long scary story about her experience from the night before but Ding doesn't believe her. The strange part is that Lee was locked in her room last night so who was the person thinking in the house? Afterwards, Chen goes to let his sister out but once Lee is free, Meg and Ding sneak into her room to see if they can find anything interesting. Lee's room was large and inside, Meg discovers the same doll from the previous night which confirms that Lee must have snuck out without unlocking the door which was really strange. The sight of the doll scares Meng, but just then, Yuan shows up and gives both of them a scare. Now after that, the group heads out to a pumpkin patch where Shen shares more about his sister and Meng talks to Li about her possession. Lee explains that when she's possessed, she completely loses control and doctors think that she has schizophrenia. However, Lee knows deep down that she is possessed. We also find out that there is no phone signal here and Shen tells them about the landline on the ground floor which is the only way to make phone calls to the city. After that, they start preparing for the ritual and Wang writes some incantation on red paper. She then performs a small ceremony and makes a doll which she moves around the house. She takes the doll to Lee's room and pretends it's alive. Wang plays with the doll and then she ties it up, setting the stage for the ritual. The Hua Ren ceremony was finally underway and Lee was laid down on the bed. Wang starts playing the doll game again which makes Lee's breathing become erratic. Suddenly, She screams like a mad woman and gets up, knocking over the ritual altar. Lee grabs Wong, asking her how many people she has killed over and over again. Yuan and Shen try to restrain her but Lee persistently questions Wong in a crazy manner about her supposed killings. The reason behind Lee's strange accusation will be revealed later but the scene was really creepy. Yuan leads his wife out of the room where Wong's powers seem to be weakened. They manage to calm Lee down and lock her back in her room but the Hua Ren ceremony fails and Wong admits that the demon is too powerful. She says she needs to get her teacher otherwise Lee will become even more demonic. Yuan is brought back into her room and at this point Meng discovers that Ding had secretly set up that secret box camera in Wang and Yuan's room, allowing him to overhear all their conversations. Wang and Yuan discuss how dangerous Li is and they reveal that the demon inside her knows about their past, which is why they decide it's best to leave that place immediately. Then Wang comes to Ding and Meng and tells them to prepare to head back. A little while later, everyone is ready to leave and Wang promises Shen that she'll return soon with her teacher. After taking some money from Shen, everyone heads out but Meng and Ding realize they forgot the secret box camera back in the room and just then, they get a flat tire which means they're now stuck in the house again. They all head back inside and Shen calls a friend in the city to arrange a new tire but it turns out that it'll take a day. So there's no choice but for everyone to stay in that house for one more night. Everyone retreats to their respective rooms but later that night, Yuan and Wang end up in a heated argument cause Yuan wants to divorce Wang. During their fight, they both reveal that they have committed multiple murders in the past and this is something the demon inside Lee has picked up on. Meng and Ting overhear this shocking revelation and they start to panic cause they now know that their lives might be in serious danger in all directions. By the end of their argument, Wang promises Yuan 100,000 Chinese Yuan as a payoff and then the two can get a divorce but that money is nearly enough to settle things in Yuan's mind. And it only fuels his resentment towards Wong even more. Hearing all that, Meng gets scared and wants to run away but Ting reminds her that it's the middle of the night. He takes her to her room but later that night, we see demonic Lee holding a doll outside Meng's room's window. 
Li is wandering around the house and eventually she goes to Wang and Yuan's room. Li was also holding a knife and it seemed like she was going to stab Wang in her sleep but she hesitates as if she still has some control over her body and she quietly leaves the room instead. The scene shifts to Ding who steps out of his room to go to bathroom. After doing his business, as he was walking back from the creepy washroom, he sees Lee standing by the staircase, still holding that doll. Scared, Ding approaches her, but suddenly, the knife slips from Lee's hand and falls to the floor. In a creepy manner, she picks the knife back up and Ding's heart races as the lights suddenly go out. And when the lights come back on, Lee is standing right in front of him. Terrified, Ding ran for his life and Lee disappears into thin air. The next day, Meg and Ding watch the footage from Wang's room and see Lee in it, which is incredibly unsettling. Both friends can wrap their heads around how Lee managed to leave her room at night. Since they can't show the video from Wang's room cause it's illegal, Ding and Meng decide to share the footage from their own rooms where Lee can be seen standing outside the window. After watching it, Shen gets scared and starts begging Wang for help. Wang and Yuan promise him that they'll fix his sister no matter what and after that, Wang goes to perform a spell, placing an incantation on Li's room to keep her from leaving at night. However, Li starts talking normally from inside her room. They unlock the door and she seems fine for the moment but then she invites Meng to take a walk with her. On their walk, on their walk, Lee starts crying and apologizes to Meng. She says she might have done something wrong last night, but she couldn't help herself and she don't remember a thing. Meng notices how sad Lee looks and she feels her pain. Meng then later talks to Ding about it and they both decide that they need to leave before things get worse. After a while, the landline at the house breaks down and the guy who was supposed to bring a new tire doesn't show up either. Everyone asks Shen what they should do and in the end, Shen go to a nearby town to buy a new tire. He says it'll take a couple of hours and then they can all go home and bring the teacher back. While Shen's gone, Wang starts praying in her room and Meg and Ding go for another walk. They talk and we find out that they used to be in a relationship but they broke up. However, even though they're not together anymore, they're still good friends. And Ding even admits that he wants to get back together with Meng, but she doesn't say anything about it. Now everyone is just waiting for the tire and after a long time in the evening, Chen returns with a new tire. He changes the tire and at the same time, Ding goes to grab his camera that he had set up in the secret box. As soon as the tire is fixed, everyone piles into the car, but then they discover that the car is not starting up. It quickly becomes clear that their car has mysteriously broken down and this leads to an argument between Yuan and Wang cause Wang has been telling Yuan for a long time that they need to get a new car. Now they had no choice but to stay another night at this home so they gathered for dinner. Shen went to check on Li but she didn't answer when he called her. When they finally got the door open to her room, they were horrified to find that Li had taken her own life. She had rushed for her sister's body and Meng started screaming for everyone to come. The whole house was filled with panic as they all shook with fear. The sound of crying echoed through the hallways and after a long time when the crying finally stopped, Shen told everyone to go outside so he could have some time alone with his sister. Ding and Ben talk about what happened and it was clear to both of them that Lee was deeply depressed which led to her tragic decision. Just then they heard a commotion outside and they rushed to see what's going on. They found Yuan and Wang returning money to Shen cause they were unable to save Lee. Eventually the house fell silent but later that night Meg went to find Ding cause she was scared to go to the bathroom alone. However, Ding didn't open the door. Meng pushed forward and as she made her way down to the hallway, she bumped into Ding who was also coming from the bathroom. But then when they turned, they saw Lee's baby doll which was now hanging on the gate. It wasn't there just a second ago and now both friends were terrified cause there was no one else around. 
Dig screamed for Yuan Wang and Shen to come over and they all froze when they saw the doll had it there cause none of them put it there. Shen rushed to check on his sister but when he got to her room, he discovered that Lee's body had disappeared. Panicking, Chen started searching for his sister like a madman, opening every door one by one. Finally, at the end of the hallway, he found Lee standing in a room, but suddenly... <laughs> she turned evil and attacked Shen with a knife, brutally killing him. The other four screamed and ran for their lives, but in this chaos, Ding's camera broke and they all scattered in different directions. Wang and Meng run into the woods but Wang keeps going ahead while Meng falls behind. Lost in the darkness, Meng decides to go back and look for Ding. She starts wandering around the house and when she reaches the staircase, she notices that the doll has disappeared. Just then, she hears Ding's voice coming from his room. Following the sound, she finds the doll again in another room but it was now making creepy noises. Meng rushes into Ding's room but Ding was not there. Only his voice was coming from the laptop. This sends Shiver down Meng's spine and she screams as she ran back into the woods. While wandering in the dark, she suddenly stops cause she spots a figure behind a tree. The figure turns out to be Shen but Meng knew that he was dead. He calls her name from behind the tree but Meng doesn't approach him cause she knows the truth. When she refuses to go near him, Shen starts moving toward her with a knife in hand and Meng screams again running for her life. Meng runs and hides in a corner of an abandoned place and turns off the light of her camera. However, Shen soon comes there and calls her name in a creepy manner. Suddenly, his voice goes quiet and Meg hears Aunt Wong's voice instead. She then turns on the light and discovers Wong in terrible condition. Wong starts explaining all the paranormal things that happened to her and both girls begin to cry. But then, Wang sees something behind Meng and Meng's breath catches in her throat as she turns around only to find nothing there but suddenly <laughs> Evil Shen appears behind Wang and attacks her with a knife. Fortunately Wang and Meng manage to escape into the woods but Meng remember that her friend Ding might be stuck somewhere. She wanted to go back and save him but Wang tried to stop her. When Men wouldn't listen, Wang hit her and snatched her camera before running off into the darkness. Meng was left alone and scared but now the scene shifted to Ding who reached the same abandoned place. He set his camera down and then he pulled a shard of glass from his foot. Just then Meng popped up outside the window and finally the two friends reunited. Meng started crying and Ding comforted her, showing how much he cared for her and it was clear that Meng trusted him a lot. Meanwhile, Wang still running, reached a car and out came Yuan, which meant he was leaving Wang behind to escape on his own. This makes Wang furious as she started hitting Yuan and a fight broke between two of them. In the end, Yuan, filled with rage, grabbed a huge rock and hit Wang over the head with it. He kept striking her with the stone until she was lifeless which basically means he was really fed up with his wife and that led him to this decision. Yuan then dragged Wang's body aside and drove away the car taking the camera with him but on the way. Evil Lee appeared in the car's back seat and then she brutally stabbed Yuan and murdered him. A little while later, Ding and Meng arrived at the same spot where the car was, only to find all the dead people standing around the car. It was apparent that these were just regular corpses. The demon inside of Lee was actually controlling everyone. 
The evil spirit soon noticed Ding and Meng, and the two friends ran for their lives. Now they ran and ran and ran, but then Meng's foot got caught in a bear trap. Ding tried desperately to free her, but her foot was severely trapped. He put all his strength into it, but he couldn't manage to save her. And then they hear demonic voices approaching. This makes Ding scare, and he got scared enough that in the end, he apologized to Meng before abandoning her to save himself. Meng was left alone in the dark, crying and heartbroken because of her best friend. Now the scene cuts and a few months later, we see that Meng and Ding both made it through. The demon must have returned to hell before murdering him. And this is just my theory, because it's not clear what happened. Now we see Meng drive into a mental hospital to see Ding. We find out that he's completely lost it because he's convinced that it's all his fault that Meng died. When Meng gets there, she finds Ding screaming in his room, claiming that Meng is dead. Now Meng cannot bring herself to face him, so she leaves the hospital without seeing him. She has lost all trust in him, but at least they were both alive and that's what matters. And this is where the movie ends. So this was the recap video on the movie, The Possessed, and I hope you have liked it. If you have, then please subscribe the channel and like this video. I really need your support to grow further. If you wanna watch this movie, there's a link to my Telegram channel in the description box. If that link does not work, just go to Telegram and put my channel's name in the search bar. You can find this movie on my Telegram after my next upload for 7 days only. So if you're watching this video after 7 days, you may have missed this one. If you don't wanna miss more, make sure to subscribe and like this video. And I'm mostly active on Insta, so you can follow me there as well. And look into my other channel, where we discuss about the mysteries of the world. All the links at the description box. For now, I'll see you all in the next one. Till then, stay awake, because they'll always see you.